Between them, the planet hunters are beginning to define the first galactic map of Earth-like worlds. At last, a phone directory for those listening for a message from E.T. They're going to allow us to sort of sharpen our gaze of the heavens, where we're pointing these, these antennas, trying to pick up a signal. They're going to tell us, hey, look, you don't have to look at every star. These are the ones that have planets. And then eventually they'll be able to say, actually, these are the ones that have planets that are the same size as Earth. And 10 years after that, they'll be able to say not only that, but these are the ones that where we find a little bit of oxygen or, or methane in their atmosphere. So they have some biology. And it's up to you to find out if any of that biology is smart or not. Rather than the entire galaxy of 200 billion stars, in the future, SETI need only tune into the handful of star systems that Kepler discovers. Everything has caused us to become more optimistic and we really believe that uh, in the next 20 years or so, we're going to learn a great deal more about life beyond Earth and very likely we will have detected that life and perhaps even intelligent life elsewhere in our galaxy. Remember, there's a flip side to this. It could be that advanced technological civilizations, species, are a rarity, one in a million, maybe one in a billion. If so, we humans could be quite a precious rarity in the Milky Way galaxy. Maybe, in fact, they're not out there watching us. We may be the ones to be the first to go out and explore the galaxy. If you'd like to explore Dr. Frank Drake's famous equation and come up with your own estimate of the number of alien civilizations in the galaxy, log on to bbc.co.uk forward slash horizon. No aliens on Newsnight tonight, at least none I recognise. We're in the States for crucial primary elections. We're trying to find out what Nick Clegg's about and wondering what Ian Paisley's memorial will be. Join us at 10.30.